If I may have your attention, please. At this time, we're going to begin the funeral service here in our chapel for Dr. Bernard Miller. As we begin the service, I would ask if any of you might have a cell phone or any other noise-making device, please turn them off at this time. Officiating the service here today will be Rabbi Cantor Michael Davis. It seems like just yesterday. I can see Bernie sitting right there talking back in November when Marilyn passed away and here we are again. So we gather in sacred congregation to honor his life, to be with the family, just to be together a little bit, to grieve together, and to honor his long and rich life. So we begin with ancient words, perhaps the most beloved of all the Psalms, the 23rd Psalm. And you can find the English uh, reading, the translation on the inner panel of the handout that you received when you came in. If you're following us on live stream, then any translation works. I'll chant it in the traditional, original Hebrew of the Tanakh, of the Bible, and invite you to take this time to go inward, to come together in this sacred space. Mizmor le David Adonai roi lo echsar Dinot deshe yar bitseini Al mei menuchot yenahaleini Af she is shove Let us read together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'd like to offer one reflection on this final verse that we read, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On one word, the Hebrew that I chanted for that was uh, the shavti, for I will dwell. But the actual word in the Hebrew for dwell is not the shavti, but it's the yashavti. So we hear the difference, the shavti, the yashavti, one syllable difference. The shavti actually means something else. It does mean something. It means I will return. And there's a teaching that I've been reflecting on that when I say I will return in the house of the Lord forever doesn't mean anything, which is why it's been changed. And we read it as I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But what if we can find meaning in the English of the translation exactly as written? I will return in the house of the Lord forever. Because as we go through our mortal journey, we will inevitably fall away from the path that we chart, path of wholeness, whether it's physical health, whether it's mental well-being, whether it's our relationships, our integrity, wherever we chart a path, we will inevitably at some point fall away. And when that happens, what we can hope, what we can plan for is to have these houses of the Lord within which we can return to that path whether those are houses of worship, or whether those are our families, our friends, music, friends playing music together, whatever it is, those places that we set in store for us as houses of the Lord, houses of the Spirit, so that when the time comes, we can return in those houses. My hope and prayer that this, what we're doing right now, this sacred gathering, is one such house of the Lord within which to return, to come back, to move forward. Let us take a few moments together for private reflections, memories, a prayer if you like. Let's take a few moments of silence together. Let us come together with a prayer for peace, the Oseh Shalom. You can find that on the back panel, the panel that has the Kaddish. It's the last two lines. Let us sing this prayer together. As I like to say, if you know it, sing out loud. And if you don't, just fake it along with me. Oseh Shalom bim Romav Hu Yaseh Shalom Aleinu Ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'imru, imru, amen. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu. We all call Yisrael. So we're going to hear some tributes, some words of love from family members. I think Alyssa, you're going to come up and lead us in that.
Thank you all for coming today to celebrate the memory of my amazing dad. He was charming, generous, and passionate, and he was a man who could fill the room with his big personality. Bernie Miller grew up on Shepherd Avenue in Brooklyn in the 1930s and 40s with his younger brother, Alan. The stories he told of his childhood paint a very colorful picture. He excelled at stickball, was a formidable boxer, and could throw a football the length of two sewers. An excellent student, he was number one in his class and even delivered his bar mitzvah speech in Yiddish. During primary school, he spent months at home sick with scarlet fever and hepatitis. It was then he decided he wanted to be a doctor. My father loved the practice of medicine. As an internist and pulmonologist, he was a medical sleuth, devising creative solutions to all sorts of medical problems. He once solved a crime when he discovered and proved that his patient was being poisoned in the hospital by his own son who brought him cookies laced with arsenic. He was an old fashioned doctor who looked for clues that went beyond blood tests and scans. And he took his time with his patients to find out who they were and all about their hobbies. He was a family doctor in every sense of the word. He practiced family medicine and also shared his medical insights with family and friends. My dad was a Renaissance man. He was a musician who played the piano and cello and became a collector of fine instruments. He was a gardener who created beautiful landscapes, a fly fisherman who tied his own flies, and a large format black and white photographer who developed photos in his basement darkroom. In the past year, he studied watercolor painting and dabbled in drawings of the human face. He loved reading and theater, the symphony and opera. He was a true patron of the arts. In past weeks, as the end grew near, we talked about his life and the legacy he would leave behind. He loved his family and championed our endeavors. He was a loving and supportive husband of nearly 63 years to our mother, Marilyn, and took great pride in his children and his magnificent grandchildren, Nathan, Noah, Abby, and Tamara. I see his many gifts in them, his creativity, his intellect, his artistic eye, his love of music and pursuit of science. We will miss you, Dad. You did a lot of good in the world. You were one of a kind. Papa. One of my earliest memories with you was in the Crystal Lake house. I was waddling down the hallway towards your study and through the door. There you were bathed in sunlight, playing the cello. You looked at me and smiled and had me bow while you did the left hand notes. After that, you taught me how to make a paper airplane and I waddled off to show Bubby. So many of my memories with you are like this. You always taught me to look and listen for the beauty in the world, for the music, the birds and the trees, and to ask questions and be curious about how these things came to be. Every interaction, you shared something marvelous, showed me how it worked, and encouraged me to try it myself, to observe and create. I loved the clocks in your house, and so you taught me to wine and take care of them. I loved plants, and you taught me to water and prune, and took me to orchid and bonsai shows. I loved music, and you taught me cello, and took me to concerts. You always encouraged participation and creation, not to be a bystander in this world. You taught me that to study science is to learn to love and respect nature and all of its interconnecting parts. You and Bubby created the warmest, most loving home where all of us cousins grew up. And like I said to Bubby, my deepest wish is to be able to provide that environment for another generation. I love you so much. The last time I played chess with my papa was about a month ago. The first time, I couldn't have been more than five years old. Papa always challenged me and always encouraged me to learn more and to explore the world, and with his many interests and talents, he set an incredible example. He taught me about medicine, art, music, fishing, photography, and so much more, but most importantly, he taught me what it means to live a full life, and for that, I will always be grateful. I always noticed Bernie, uh, as I grew up with him, because we got married when I was 23, he always had good music playing, wherever he was. It was in his house, the speakers were always playing classical music, and wherever he drove, 
he would tune into the classical station and it always seemed to have better classical music than in my car, even if I was tuned to the same station, right? I don't know how he did it, but it always seemed better when he was listening to it. Um, I'm gonna read you something my mom actually wrote, uh, which I found to be quite beautiful about Bernie. And uh, at first he didn't want it read to him, because <laughs> it was a little too heavy. Uh, and he, no, don't read that to me. But eventually we convinced him that it would be good for him to hear it, and he, he complied, and, uh, and he smiled. <clears throat> so this was what my mom wrote to, uh, to Bernie. Um, Bernie, <laughs> we are thinking of you, but you have always been in our thoughts. We could not help it, because whenever Alyssa told a joke or did a voice good enough for Second City, we thought of you. When the boys laughed at the joke, we saw you and heard you right there. When your grandchildren excelled in their fields, we saw your brilliance radiating through them. You are in Chicago, but in my mind, you are smiling at something many times. Um, your own great story is what you're smiling at. Uh, but you are the greatest storyteller of all. That's because you have so many experiences and filtered things through your special eyes. You have shared your many artistic talents, humor, good sense, and brilliance with your children and grandchildren, and anyone who got to spend time with you was really lucky. You are loved, admired, and emulated, and uh, that is a very great achievement. Larry David would say, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Love to you, Rochelle. So. That's from our family to Bernie. Thank you. So I said when we met the Jewish tradition, mourners are not expected to get up and speak. It's enough just to be here in the front row. But there were words that needed to be said, words of love, and thank you for sharing that love and tributes with us. A modern poet wrote, you can shed tears that he has gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you cannot see him, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone. Or you can cherish that memory and let that live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what he would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Just find out a few more words. You know, we're in... Um, special time in the Jewish year. It's considered the end of the year. I know there's Rosh Hashanah, there's a whole calculation, but it's the end of winter, right? We're looking forward to spring. And this is considered the last month of the year. Actually, it's a double month this year. And we're told to be joyful at this time in anticipation and celebration of the holiday of Purim. And today actually is the beginning of that last month, Rosh Chodesh. And we know it's the beginning of the month because if you look up, if it won't be cloudy tonight, you won't see a moon or a very thin crescent. It's the beginning of the lunar month, the beginning of the Jewish month, the darkest time of the month. And it's precisely at this time that we're told to anticipate the fullness of the moon, the light that will come, and to be joyful in anticipation. And there's always that combination of being here and in saying farewell, in that sadness, but also in reflecting in this moment on all the riches and love. And I'm reminded in, in my own life, and perhaps that all resonates with you, that when I had a loss in my family and I came into the room the mo shortly after it happened, after my loved one passed away, and suddenly I noticed that the room was bathed in sunlight. And it wasn't as if the previous days had been overcast and all of a sudden the clouds cleared and the sun was shining. It wasn't that. 
It was just that the suffering had lifted, that the darkness that I was feeling had lifted, and there was relief, and there was comfort in that, and this, to allow the sun in. And in this moment, it's a little easier to look back and remember the gifts and the love, and to look back and bless a long and beautiful life. Now, it's always the truth, I find, that when you... Uh, that when you come to a funeral, that you hear stories that perhaps you never heard before, right? Where you know the truth, but you hear more to it. And I always felt an affinity with your dad, your granddad, who was always warm and friendly to me, and when we connected, at whatever the occasion was. But you explained to me that that was his way in general. He went out and sought that connection with people. He nurtured people. He took great joy in teaching medical students. And I got to know your family when you were at Lakeside, and it was unusual to see Nathan going around the classrooms. There weren't many kids, teenagers, who went around and gave up their time to teach. And Noah in the band, showing up with his dad, and um, mostly older people than, than us, um, and coaching us in music. And I guess I owe a debt of gratitude to your grandfather for you having the cello, as you explained today, that you uh, gave of that. And in particular, I was inspired to hear, I was a bit overwhelmed by all the gifts that, you, that your father had. It's just incredible, the amount of interest and the comfort of the true Renaissance man. But so often we talk about people as having gifts, as if it's something that just came down from on high, when really most of what we get in life is through hard work, right? We may have an affinity for something, but it takes application and effort. And it was really inspiring to hear that he picked up the cello in his 30s, right? And then that became this lifelong love that brought him friendship, right? Even during COVID, to be gathered with the trios and the quartets on the back porch. That gave him so much comfort through the knowledge of music and that connection. And then he passed on, right? Uh, lives on in your family. You told me so many stories. I just want to reflect a little bit about um, Bernie and Marilyn's life of 60 years of marriage, of going out to McHenry County from Rogers Park and Brooklyn, the Jewish shtetl, the Heim, out into an area that's not the Heim, not the shtetl. And um, you, you, told, you told me previously and, and now as well how you drove a Volvo, which was like almost a marker that this is the Jewish doctor's family. It stood out. And how um, he received payment in kind from people, whether it was uh, you had lots of bookcases, well-crafted bookcases, a duck decoy, artwork, right? Which in, in some ways is almost like the really old country, right? Back in the day of a full circle of uh, taking that. But I thought there was perhaps a, a a story or a parable for really the journey we all take in life because we're all raised and begin our lives literally, literally in a bubble, right? in a protective bubble. And we raise our children in those bubbles. And then as they grow, as they stand on their own two feet, we hope that we will go out into the world, into a world that is strange because it's outside that bubble, to do good, to do good uh, in the world. And Bernie and Marilyn certainly did that, going off uh, to California during World War II. The flag is a tribute to that service. And then going out uh, into the suburbs to, to build communities there and to apply themselves to that, create a, a life for their community, for their family, a beautiful life. So we honor this lovely man his many gifts, his many relationships, the love that he instilled in you, and the legacy and the many beautiful memories that you cherish today and will continue to cherish for many years to come. May his memory be an enduring blessing. We turn to the closing prayers, to the El Malay Rachamim, which you can find on the uh, inside panel beneath the 23rd Psalm. I invite you to please rise as we turn to the final prayer. Yeah. 
אל מלא רחמים שוכן במרומים המצא מנוחה נחיינו תחת כנפי השכינה עם קדושים וטהרים כזוהר הרקיעה מזהירים אס נשמס יקירנו שהלך לעולמו לוחן בול הרחמים יסתירהו בסתר כנפיו לעולמים ויצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתו אדוני הוא נחלתו וינוח ושלום על משכבו ונאמר אמן. O God full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence. among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament, and to the soul of Dr. Bernard Miller, who has gone into eternity. And on eye of mercy bring him under the cover of thy wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may his repose be peace. And we say, Amen. This concludes the service here in our chapel. The interment will take place immediately at the family's plots at Memorial Park Cemetery, 9900 Gross Point Road here in Skokie. Following the interment today, the family will be receiving calls of condolence and sitting Shiva here in this building across the lobby in the North Chapel. The formal beginning time for those watching online is 2 p.m. For those of us going through the funeral process, you'll be welcome to come back immediately. For those of you going in procession with the family, the procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please make sure you have an orange funeral safety sticker. That sticker should be placed in the front passenger side windshield. But also ask that you please have your flashing hazard lights on and your bright headlights on at all times. For an additional measure of safety, our staff will be placing magnetic flags on the tops of the vehicles throughout the procession. It is a short procession today, but while we're driving in procession, Please drive as close as safety permits to the vehicle in front of you at all times. We want to avoid having any large spaces or large gaps in the procession, particularly as we pass through the intersections. For those of you watching online, we will not be live streaming the interment. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise as Dr. Miller and his family and rabbi are escorted. And I would ask the family members that are serving as pallbearers to please step forward. Thank you.
This will be a brief uh, of service, and thankfully, it's not as cold as it was back in November, right? Um, right. So, I, you know, we, times like this usually end with let, we should teach her that simchas are happy occasions. And my mind goes back to, to a, a simcha, the last simcha, Noah and Roy's wedding, um, in the backyard, right? And uh, and I remember that because it's the only time in my whole life where I've doubled as the uh, wedding photographer, because I was the only non uh, Adam was running the video right, the live stream, and uh, I was the only non-family member, so I was the only one who could be outside the frame. Uh, it was just wonderful to see everybody gathered together, you know, and, and sort of just going for it and just uh, rejoicing together. Uh, and I thought I'd mention that because this is the, uh, on a personal note, this is the brightest tie I've ever worn to a funeral. I've never worn anything this bright, and, and thank nobody's commented on it to thank you, but it's actually my wedding uh, tie, and I notice it's yellow and blue, so I thought, uh, you know, your dad stood for World War II, fought for democracy. So uh, there's joy in looking back at his life and also that we are connected to a much bigger world, even in our time of sadness, a time of joy. Uh, we, we bring that to the, the world. And um, it's just remarkable to think how many relationships your dad had, you know, and I like to think that a month from now, a year from now, you'll walk into a restaurant or a movie theater or live, a plane and you'll find somebody who's connected, you know, through the six degrees of separation, usually a lot less. So we are gathered to bring Bernie together with Marilyn. They were separated, you were telling me, just for, it was exactly 100 days, exactly 100 days. And here they are together, um, as they were in life, right, for 63 years, right. Um, and this is a place to come to, to remember both and to honor them um, and to, to celebrate that sweetness. But we are saying goodbye to a generation, to a family's generation, to the matriarch and patriarch. Um, and they planted good seeds, strong trees, bearing fruit beyond. Um, so we say, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yihishem, Adonai Mvorach. Love has been given, love has been taken. Blessed be the name of God. And we turn to the interment. We sing these uh, words from the opening of Kol Nidre, which I know was a favorite uh, of your dad's. Um, perhaps it was the cello suite, the, the Bruch uh, Kol Nidre, right? So even when um, the reform movement took away the words, they left the music because the music that speaks to the soul. and. Uh, this melody is the opening of the Kol Nidre service, and it, it's a mystical verse that says, A great light lies in store for the righteous, and for the pure of heart there is joy. And it occurs to me right now that that's in the moment, right now, that who knows what seeds we've planted that will bear fruit in the future, but there is that joy in the moment of living a good life.
Sadi. In a moment we'll say the Kaddish uh, to have, if you may have, if not I'll leave you in it. The Kaddish is um, an ancient prayer in an old Jewish language, Aramaic. It's a prayer of affirmation and a certain set of beliefs of the divine. Uh, if those speak to you then I invite you to answer Amen to that or and to whatever is true and enduring for you at this time. And I invite the family, the mourners to say the Kaddish and the rest of us, our job is to answer Amen. There are four places we say Amen. The Q in the uh, Hebrew is Ve'imru. Ve'imru, the answer is we say Amen. But to take the guesswork out of it, I will raise my hand as we approach so you can respond to that. And I invite you to call out loudly as you feel comfortable so the family can hear the warmth and strength of your beautiful voices embracing them. Uh, so I invite uh, you to rise for the last time for this prayer that we take with us that can be said for the next year when you gather as a remembrance, as an affirmation.
יתקדל ויתקדש שמי רבה, בעלמה דברה חירותי וימליץ מלכותי, בחייכון וביומכון ובחיי בכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קרי ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולעלמי עלמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלה על שמי וקדושה בריך הוא. ואלה מנחול ברכתה ושירתה, תוש בכתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום. עלינו, כבר כל ישראל, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום. עלינו ועל כל ישראל, The final act is to participate in the burial. It's an ancient custom, an ancient requirement. So everybody is invited to come forward and participate. Uh, you can uh, take the shovels. The tradition is three scoops. And I'd like to say, if there's anybody you know who isn't here and couldn't be here and you want to add a scoop on their behalf so they are represented by you who are here, then please feel free uh, to do that so they're included uh, through you. I invite the family to come forward first to Participate. For those of you who participate today, please watch your step at all times around the open grave. And good work is very slow.
to Those in attendance, the shiva will be observed at our funeral home. Event. 